Hello viewers, welcome to the next section of this course. Build a responsive theme with React Bootstrap and React. Now that you've completed your first web app using React.js and Bootstrap, we're going to build the first responsive theme for your app using both the frameworks. The topics we're going to cover in this section are setting up React.js and Bootstrap, React Bootstrap, Bootstrap Grid System, Helper Classes, React Components. Let's move to the first video of the second section. Setting up React.js and Bootstrap. In this video we will learn about Scaffolding Navigation Firstly, we need to create a similar folder structure to our Hello World app, which we made in Section 1, getting started with React and Bootstrap. This screen will describe the folder structure. Now you need to copy the React.js and Bootstrap files from Section 1 into the significant directories of Section 2 and create an index.html file in the root. I have already pasted those files into my Section 2 folder. Here is the markup of our HTML page. So now we have the base file and the folder structure sorted. The next step is to start scaffolding our app using the Bootstrap CSS. Scaffolding I'm sure you have a question. What is scaffolding? Simply, it gives a support structure to make your base concrete. Apart from this, we will use React Bootstrap JS in which we have a collection of Bootstrap components rebuilt for React. We can use these throughout our employee information system, which is also known as EIS. Bootstrap also includes an extremely powerful responsive grid system, which helps us to create a responsive theme layout template structure for the app. Navigation Navigation is a very important element of any static or dynamic page. So now we are going to build a navbar to switch between our pages. It could be placed at the top of our page. Here is the basic HTML structure of Bootstrap Navigation. The nav tag that used to hold everything within the navbar is instead split into two sections. Navbar header and navbar collapse, if you see the navigation structure. Navbars are responsive components, so the navbar header element is exclusively for mobile navigation and controls the expansion and collapse of the navigation with the toggle button. The data hyphen target attribute on the button directly corresponds with the ID attribute of the navbar collapse element, so Bootstrap knows what element should be wrapped in mobile devices to control the toggling. Now we also need to include jQuery in your page because Bootstrap's JS has a dependency on it. You can get the latest jQuery version from jQuery.com. Now you need to copy bootstrap.min.js from the Bootstrap extracted folder and add this to your app.js directory as well as include it on your page before bootstrap.min.js. Please make sure that your JavaScript files are included in this selected order. Let's take a quick look at the navbar component code after integrating in React. I have already added the navbar component code in index.html, so I'm going to highlight the code here. Open the index.html file in your browser to see the navbar component. This screen will show what our navigation will look like. We have included navigation directly within our body tag to cover the full width of the browser. Now we will do the same thing by using the React Bootstrap JS framework to understand the difference between Bootstrap JS and React Bootstrap JS. Nice! We have successfully learned how to set up React JS and Bootstrap.